We're live. Thank you. Will sergeants begin your recordings? Cloud is up. Backup is rolling. Thank you. Sergeant Kowalski, you may begin. Good morning, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Committee on Public Safety. At this time, would council staff please turn on their videos? Please place electronic devices on vibrate or silent. Thank you, Chair. We are ready to begin. Good morning. I'm Council Member Adrian Adams of the 28th District in Queens, and I'm the Chair of the Committee on Public Safety. We are joined this morning by Majority Leader Cumbo, Council Members Riley, Barron, Brannon, Powers, Menchaca, and Holden. I'd also like to acknowledge the hard work of committee counsel, Daniel Addis, Maxwell Kempner Williams, and Aliyah Reynolds. Today, we're voting on resolution number 1372-2020, calling upon the United States Congress to pass and the president to sign HR 1280 S.3912, which is the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act of 2020. Before we address the resolution itself, I just want to say something about Tuesday's verdict. It's hard not to be conflicted about the meaning of this conviction. I'm not talking about whether or not the jury got it right. I don't have any doubt that the jury got it right. But it's hard to ignore the fact that that verdict is an exception to what normally happens in police misconduct cases. No matter how strong the evidence, no matter how many witnesses or cell phone videos or body camera videos there are. These convictions are exceptionally rare. And what should have been an open and shut case had the entire country on edge. That this verdict is such a relief instead of a foregone conclusion tells me that there is so much work left to be done. That there are people out there who believe that this conviction is in any way an attack on the good men and women who put on a uniform or that officers need the discretion to do what Derek Chauvin did, tells me that we need to fundamentally change our understanding of what authority police officers truly need to keep themselves and all of us safe. Turning to the resolution before us today, I'm not going to say that the council asking Congress to pass this bill is the be all and end all of what we need to do to move forward. It is just one small step. It's this council recognizing that we can't do everything locally. We've tried to do our part, curbing the use of qualified immunity, banning the use of chokeholds, requiring the department to publish a standard set of penalties to be used in police disciplinary cases, requiring more transparency in the information the department reports publicly. But there are certain changes that legally need to happen at the federal level and at the state level. And as local elected leaders, it is incumbent upon us to take every opportunity to weigh in and support our allies in Congress as they work to move barriers to accountability and justice. The federal bill this resolution endorses would expand on some of the reforms we've enacted, further limiting the use of qualified immunity and banning chokeholds at the national level. It would also ban the use of no-knock warrants in drug cases, and make it easier to prosecute police misconduct in federal court, among many other things. These reforms are not anti-police reforms. Just this Tuesday's verdict was not an anti-police verdict. By holding police departments across the country accountable, we will restore public faith in the officers who have dedicated themselves to public service, who answer our calls when we need them, and who watched the video of George Floyd's murder with the same disgust that I felt, know that when we felt, when we saw what happened almost one year ago. With that, Council, I turn it over to you. Are you, Madam Chair, asking for a roll call vote? Yes, unless the majority leader would like to add remarks. Yes, thank you so much, Chair Adams. Can you hear me at this time? Yes. I want to first begin by thanking you for your leadership. I know that 
dealing with all of this as we've spoken um, in terms of being chair of the Public Safety Committee at this particular time in history and losing both of your parents um, during the pandemic, you have continued to show such strength and determination um, in ushering history forward. So I really thank you, my Spellman sister, and I love you. And I just, I really support you in all that you do. And I'm going to speak at the stated meeting on this, but you know, I just wanted to say that on Tuesday, the whole nation watched with bated breath as the jury deliberated over the murder of George Floyd by a Minneapolis police officer. I'm positive that many, if not all of us, breathed a collective sigh of relief when the judge read out the guilty verdict. Yet George Floyd still does not breathe. His life was cut short, violently, publicly, and without any sympathy, care, or recognition of the fact that he was a father, a son, and a brother, and a friend to so many. This particular legislation, as you have said, is not an anti-police package. This is a humanity package. This is something for myself as the mom of a three-year-old black boy that I have to do before I leave office as I am term limited. This legislation will transform law enforcement culture by prohibiting all racial and religious profiling, creating accreditation standards for police departments, banning chokeholds and no knock warrants, limiting military grade equipment transfers to state and local law enforcement and empowering communities to create new public safety approaches and grants for community based organizations. The U.S. House of Representatives has already passed H.R. 1280, and the Senate and President should immediately follow suit. This is our part here in New York City to add to this chorus and to this voice to usher this forward. And I'm proud to stand with you as the chair of this committee in pushing this forward. I thank all the members of the committee, and particularly the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus for their support, um, as well as their advocacy around this entire legislative package. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Majority Leader, and thank you for your leadership as well. I'd also like to acknowledge that we've been joined by Council Members Miller, Gibson, and Rodriguez. With that, let us begin the vote. Good morning, William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Committee on Public Safety. Resolution 1372, Chair Adams. I vote aye. Rodriguez. Permission, Chair, to play my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Chair. And as someone again that started organizing around this issue of a sexy use of force by some members of the NYPD and also working hard to improve the relationship between the police and the community. You know, for many of us, uh, our experience is completely different from other or a colleague that we thank for embracing the fight of being progressive. But for many of us, we don't have to be described as progressive because we've been working hard being progressive, working hard to be grassroots organized. Then we don't have a limited counting of those cases of our people, you know, being killed by a sexy use or member of the police forces. It doesn't matter if that happened in New York City, happened in Brooklyn, the last one that happened, you know, in all the states. I think that this effort of this resolution has, you know, a clear a, a decision and commitment, which is to address a systematic racist society where we live, that unfortunately, innocent people being losing their life because of the culture of this nation. This is not just only about the law, this is about the culture where some people feel that they are superior, superior because they have a gun, superior because, you know, they the color of the skin, superior because they have more resources. And I think, again, that in the name of our children, we have to continue learning from what happened to George Roy. That's why for me, in the 90s, I was working with Anthony Miranda, the president of the Latino police officer, with Brooklyn Board President Eric Adams, as a president of the black police office. We many, uh, Reverend Sharkin and many other addressing a systematic racist society that we have, 
well, fortunately, innocent people be, be losing their life by the name of a percentage of police officers who are not the majority, but the bad apple are everywhere. We had to learn from George Floyd and hopefully with this resolution, we also continue doing our part to address that problem. With that, I vote aye. Thank you, Council Member Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted to Council Member Gibson. Thank you so much, Chair Adams, and good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, colleagues. Um, I too want to echo the sentiments expressed by our majority leader, Lori Cumbo. Uh, Chair Adams, you have been incredibly strong during such a challenging time, and we love you. Your sisters in the Women's Caucus, your colleagues in the council, we love you, and we will continue to pray for your strength. Um, you have been working our uh, relentless hours as Chair of Public Safety and also dealing with personal struggles. Um, and we just simply thank you so much for your incredible strength uh, at this time. Um, I wanna thank Majority Leader Lori Cumbo uh, for leading this resolution on today's agenda today. And I am certainly in support of this because this is a very important moment for us in the history of this country. When we all saw the murder of George Floyd last year, it sent shockwaves throughout this country. We watched as an African-American man was senselessly murdered on videotape and it reignited a conversation on racial injustice in this country. Many advocates, activists, elected officials took to the streets last summer demanding accountability and also recognizing that justice will be achieved. And with this week's guilty verdict in the murder of George Floyd, we recognize this important moment in history because our advocacy, our fight, and our work every day towards a fair and just society was solidified with this verdict, but we know our work remains undone. We must continue to lift up the families of so many others who struggle for justice every single day. The murder of George Floyd captured the hearts of so many Americans, particularly Americans of color who continue to face racism, discrimination, and oppression for so many years in this country. Many of us went into this trial with a level of hope and optimism, praying for justice. And while we recognize justice can bring comfort and healing to the family, our fight for all lives and black lives will always continue. I pray for the family of George Floyd and I pray for so many other families as well, including our sister, Breonna Taylor. May their deaths never be in vain but continue to be a catalyst for necessary change in this country. I am proud to support this resolution, supporting the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act, because I believe it is a right step in the direction in which we need to be. And it also strikes a necessary balance of what we fundamentally believe defines our work in this country and certainly in the city council. Thank you so much, Chair Adams. Thank you, Majority Leader Cumbo. And I proudly vote aye on today's resolution. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member. Menchaco. Uh, thank you, Chair, for your leadership on this, this committee and the work it has ahead. It will not be easy as we move through this work together, but I know that our open minds and open hearts will continue to shape uh, the work that we have. And for, for those who are uh, leaving the council, I think it's gonna be incumbent on us to keep fighting for our communities, uh, which makes me feel proud to vote aye on this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, council member Miller. Permission to explain? Permission granted to council member Miller. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I think that while I echo the sentiments that we've all taken a sign of relief, um, you know, and as I watched folks take to the street over the past year uh, and young folks uh, really become engaged, um, my first experience at this type of violence, I was probably 10 and at 15, a really good friend, uh, 14 years old, was was killed, uh, Randolph Evans, by police officer Robert Torsney, who 
said he saw a weapon that he didn't see. Three days later, they found a bicycle spoke and he pleaded guilty by reason of insanity and mental epilepsy. Not only did he get off, we continue to pay his disability retirement pension. They're just, I vote aye. Thank you, Councilmember Miller. Brennan. You know, with, with thanks to Chair Adams for, for leading us uh, through these times, I'm proud to vote aye. Holden. Uh, eliminating qualified immunity for police officers is dangerous. It's a tough job. Uh, for that reason, I vote no. Powers. I vote aye. Riley. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted to Councilmember Riley. Uh, with great gratitude, I would like to give praise to our chair um, and echo the sentiments of my colleague. Uh, you were a remarkable queen and you have put in a lot of work during, you know, tremendous time. So thank you. Um, as a young black man um, that lived in the Bronx who has been subjected to stop and frisk, um, even as working with government, um, I vote I proudly for this resolution. Thank you. A vote of eight in the affirmative, one in the negative and no abstentions. Resolution 1372 has been adopted by the committee. And Chair Adams, we are awaiting one more council member to vote. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We will leave the vote open for 10 minutes. Thank you, colleagues. Chair Adams, we actually been joined by council member Cabrera. Perfect timing. Resolution 1372, Council Member Cabrera. I vote aye. Thank you. Vote now stands at nine in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Very good. Uh, with that, uh, Mr. Clerk, are we good to adjourn? Let me double check one moment, Chair. Uh, Chair Adams, uh, yes. So final vote is nine in the affirmative, one of the negative, no abstentions. That's it. Thank you. Very good. This concludes today's hearing of the Public Safety Committee. This meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>